Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2011 action thriller film called Unknown. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Dr. Martin Harris is on a plane with his wife, Liz. They arrive in Berlin to attend a conference. Outside, they get into a taxi, but in their haste, Martin leaves his briefcase behind on a trolley. They plan to go to an exhibition on Saturday after he has had lunch with Professor Bressler. As they arrive at the hotel, Martin realizes that his briefcase is missing. Liz inquires about their room and is informed that it may not be available. She is angered and notices Martin getting back into the taxi. He has no service on his phone and gets caught in traffic. He asks the taxi driver to take a different route, but on the way, they have an accident and the car crashes off a bridge. Martin is knocked unconscious. The driver smashes her way through a window and gets him out of the car. The paramedics arrive and manage to save his life as the driver leaves the scene. Martin wakes in a hospital bed and is told that he has been in a coma for four days. He wonders why his wife isn't there, but the doctor tells him that he had no identification. Later, a nurse tells him that no one has been looking for him. His belongings are returned and he remembers receiving an engraved watch from his wife as a gift on their honeymoon. He opens a book that has a dedication from his father as well as some numbers written inside the cover. On the TV, there is a report about the conference and he remembers that he was due to attend. The doctor is reluctant to let him go, but gives him his contact details in case there are any complications. Martin goes to the hotel and tells them he lost his room key. He sees his wife and tries to follow her. The hotel security won't let him pass as he has no ID. He is escorted to Liz, but she claims not to know him. Instead, she introduces a man who says that he is Dr. Martin Harris. Martin is removed from the room and taken to see the security cameras of their check-in. It is confirmed that Liz checked in during the morning and the other Martin checked in at 3 p.m. They are unable to confirm his identity. He demands to speak to his embassy, but as it is Thanksgiving, the embassy is closed. Instead, he asks to be taken back to the hospital and see the doctor. He is put into a taxi but soon gets out and watches Liz eating through the window. He goes to stay at a cheap hotel, but they won't let him stay without his passport. He goes outside to make a call to his friend Rodney, telling him that he is in trouble. As he puts the phone down, he notices a car is following him and heads to the subway. He is followed and jumps on a train to escape. He starts to write down the appointments that he can remember. He gets off the train and tears a page out of the phone book. Suddenly, he notices a taxi like the one that he had the accident in and decides to go to the office. He asks about the driver and finds her working in a bar. Her name is Gina, but she tells him to leave her alone. He goes to the appointment with Professor Bressler, but finds that the other Martin is already there. Martin tries to convince the professor that he is genuine, but both Martins say the same things to him. The other Martin shows Martin his ID, including a picture of him with Liz. Martin passes out. Back in the hospital, the nurse gives Martin a phone number for her friend who is an investigator. The doctor apologizes for letting him leave early. Martin asks how he knows so much about Martin Harris if he is not him. Martin is sedated and sent for an MRI scan. Afterwards, the man from the subway enters and tries to take him. The nurse tries to stop him, but she is killed. The man leaves the room and Martin manages to free himself and escapes in an ambulance. When he gets out, he tries to call Liz, but the other Martin answers. Instead, he goes to meet Jurgen, the investigator that the nurse recommended. He asks the man to help him prove that he is the real Martin Harris. Martin shows him his father's book with the numbers in it. He tells Jurgen that his wife wrote the numbers. He also shows him the schedule for the week that he wrote from memory. Martin suspects that this has been planned for months but believes that there must be something that they have missed. Jurgen tells him that he will do his best to help and Martin pays him all the money that he has. He tells him to check again with the taxi driver. Martin goes to see Gina and tells her that he knows that she ran away from the accident as she is an illegal worker. He gives her his watch and asks her to talk with Jurgen. Elsewhere, Jurgen calls a man called Hans at the airport and asks for a favor. Martin tells Gina what is happening and she gives him a place to sleep. 
Han searches for details on the attendees of the conference. There is a link to a video of an assassination attempt on an Arab prince named Shada. Martin takes a look at some of Gina's drawings. She is angry that he is looking at them without permission. She tells him that she is saving to get enough money to get her papers and then she can get out of there. There is a knock at the door and a man gives her some keys for a taxi. Martin takes a shower and there is another knock at the door. Two men with guns force entry and knock Gina out. They go to find Martin, but he has climbed out onto the roof. One of the men follows him out and goes down the street. The other man is the man from the subway and waits with Gina. Martin returns and fights with him until Gina attacks him in the neck with a syringe. They leave in the taxi, but nearly run into a car being driven by the other villain. He chases them through the streets and tries to force them into the path of an oncoming tram. Ultimately, both cars crash and they seek refuge inside a club. Gina tells them that men like them murdered her family and she is now angry that she has become involved in this. She walks away and Martin opens his book and looks at the numbers. He realizes that it is a code indicating certain words on pages in the book. He starts to crack the code when Gina reappears. He apologizes for bringing trouble in her life and says that he will sort it out. He tells Jurgen that he has solved the code. It is the scientific name of two common flowering plants, but they don't know what it means. Jurgen asks how close Prince Shada is to Professor Bressler, and it appears that they are working together on progressive plans to solve world hunger. He suspects that someone may be posing as Martin Harris to get close to the prince in order to assassinate him. Martin decides to find Liz according to his schedule. Gina thinks that this isn't a good idea. He follows Liz into the exhibition as planned, but notices that the other villain is also following her. Gina tries to message him to tell him that the other Martin is also on his way. Martin manages to get some time alone with Liz, but she asks why he is following her. She tells him that she can't get out. They will kill them both. She tells him that he needs to find his briefcase before kissing him and telling him that she loves him. As he leaves, he is joined by Gina and heads to the airport. Meanwhile, Jürgen receives a letter from Hans that contains the airport security photographs of Martin and Liz together. He receives a phone call from Martin's friend Rodney, who says that he can verify his identity. He tells him that he will come right over. When he arrives, Jürgen realizes that Rodney was a former mercenary who was there to kill him. He dies due to poisons before Rodney can catch him. Martin goes to claim his briefcase at the airport. Inside, it contains his passport and other papers. Gina says that it isn't safe to stay here, but Martin insists that Liz told him to wait. Gina gets up to leave and he gives her some money to say thank you. She worries that Liz may have told them where he is and gives him back the watch before she leaves. Suddenly, Rodney arrives and explains that he has come to help. Gina is queuing for a taxi and notices Martin being abducted. She steals a taxi and gives chase. Martin is dragged out of the van. Rodney explains that this has never happened before. Martin really believes that he is Martin Harris, but Martin Harris does not exist. He was made up as a cover to get into the conference. Martin's memories are not real. The villain holds a gun to Martin as he demands to know who he really is. Rodney explains that he was a trained assassin. The villain is about to shoot him when Gina arrives and rams the villain into the van. The van falls to the ground, leaving both the villain and Rodney dead. Martin opens Rodney's suitcase and finds many fake passports for both him and Liz. Upon further examination, they discover that he was in Berlin three months ago. Martin tells Gina that the prince will be assassinated this evening and that Gina should have just let him drown. That night, the prince arrives at the conference, followed by Professor Bressler with his young daughters. Liz welcomes the prince to the party. Meanwhile, Martin and Gina enter the building through the service entrance, but they are spotted by hotel security. The professor hands his laptop to Liz for safekeeping, who plants a device to download his hard drive. Liz finds the code from Martin's father's book. Martin and Gina are caught by security, and Martin tells them that he planted a bomb in the room when he was there three months ago. Once the files are downloaded, Liz arms the bomb. The professor is nervous 
and goes to retrieve his laptop. Liz hands it back to him, and then she and the other Martin leave the party. Security have been checking the camera footage from three months ago, and when they see the images of Martin and Liz, they decide to evacuate the building. As other Martin and Liz descend the stairs, Liz decides to go back to deal with the bomb, as she doesn't want her face to be connected with the bomb that is no longer necessary. Martin spots Bressler's daughters and realizes that their names are the common names of the plants that he used as passwords. Martin knows that if his research is accessed, it could be worth billions in the wrong hands and deduces that Bressler is the target, not the prince. Martin escapes from the security office and then fights the other Martin who has returned to kill Bressler. Liz fails to defuse the bomb in time and is caught in the explosion. Martin begins to remember more details of the plan and how he was complicit. He manages to kill the other Martin with the shard of broken mirror just as Gina enters. She steps forward and takes the weapon out of his hand and then helps him out of the building. As the firefighters put out the blaze, Bressler leaves with his daughters. The following day, he announces the development of a new strain of corn that will go a long way to solving world hunger. Martin gives Gina a fake passport so that she can do whatever she wants. He also has a new identity and they get on a train to begin their new lives. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.